Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Rudy Valley, Virginia Bruce, Una Merkel, and Roscoe Carnes in Swing High, Swing Low. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, to borrow the tactics of a Toastmaster, we introduce a man who needs no introduction. Rudy Valley staked out one of the first claims to radio popularity and continues to be worth his weight in gold at the box office. The first time I went on the air, it was Rudy who introduced me. Tonight, I give fair exchange by introducing him in a new identity. Dropping his triple character of orchestra leader, singer, and master of ceremonies, Rudy steps into the single personality of Skid Johnson, the uh, singer in our play, Swing High, Swing Low. And starring with him, much to our delight and his, we have the lovely Virginia Bruce, an inspiration to any singer. Swing High, Swing Low, adapted from the Paramount screen success, is the story of a small-time entertainer who makes good on the big time and of the woman who loves him before he swings high and after he swings low again. Although you will hear Rudy Valley playing and singing only one role in this production, I'll have to confess that, that he played a second important part backstage. He was our technical advisor, our expert on the background of the story. And playing an all-important part, off stage, of course, is the real producer of these plays, Lux Toilet Soap. For besides making hits possible on our stage, Lux Toilet Soap makes a hit off stage, too, with the ladies, and delivers a star performance of its own. During a drama in which one of the leading characters is a nightclub singer, you'd naturally expect to hear some songs. Well, we, we haven't failed you. In fact, that's one of the important reasons we selected Rudy Valley for the part. Our curtain swings high now for the first act of Swing High, Swing Low, starring Rudy Valley as Skid Johnson, Virginia Bruce as Maggie King, Roscoe Carnes as Harry, and Una Merkel as Ella. <laughs> Panama Canal Zone. In the great waterway which links the eastern and the western seas, a passenger boat is waiting to be lowered through the locks on our way to California. Along the shore of the canal, a United States Army private walks sentry duty. Back and forth he paces in the red glow of the tropic sunset. Suddenly, his eye is attracted toward the boat, and his steps grow shorter until he's practically marking time. For just above his head, Framed in an open porthole is the face of a girl, a very pretty girl. The soldier drops his gun from his shoulder and stares at her delightedly. Hey, hello, you, up there in the porthole. I said hello. You weren't speaking to me by any chance. Uh-uh, on purpose. Soldiers aren't supposed to talk while they're on sentry duty. What can they do to me? They can fire me. All right, I've already quit. I'm all washed up with the Army. This is my last day. Hey, there's an idea. We ought to celebrate. The Army will probably do the celebrating. Hey, is the rest of you as beautiful as your face? No. I weigh 200 and I don't wear shoes. Fine. What do we do tonight? How about meeting in the dock under the moon? What if there isn't any moon? I'll meet you under the dock. No kidding. How about you and me going places when your boat gets in tonight? Okay? No kidding. How about you scramming so I can see some of the scenery down here? I'm the scenery down here. I'm Skid Johnson, the one-man army. Ask anybody. It's been delightful, Mr. Johnson. Now go away. You bother me. Good. I didn't think you'd admit it. Meet you in the dock at Balboa tonight. So long, Private. Nice to have met you. Hey, I'll be wearing my civvies. And I'll have a carnation in my buttonhole so you'll know me. I wouldn't know you if you wore a rose behind your ear. Okay, that's an idea. Oh, you want to go sightseeing for anyway? He's a 
right, Zella. I've got one night in Panama, and I'm going to see everything there is to be seen. Come on. I don't see that soldier you told me about. Well, if you're looking for him, you can stop right now. Say, a date's a date. what I always say. Three dollars an hour, so I say. Speak good English, stop to climb. What about grabbing a cab, Ella? Well, it's easier on the feet, but you got a bargain with these guys. I'll be right back, Maggie. Three dollars an hour, taxi cab, right here. Good English. Three dollars. One dollar, taxi cab, one dollar. Hey, you, what did you say? There you take my car. One dollar, round trip, Panama City. Okay, one dollar. Wait here, I'll get my friend. Sure, sure, lady. There, you see, senoritas? Situated on the plaza of the cathedral is all these temples in Spanish America. And as best we stood effects of time's corrosing hand. The cathedral built 1675 and he's been prolonged greater part of century. Pretty good, eh? Yeah. The only trouble is this isn't a cathedral. The sign over the gate said Palace of the President. Oh, must be a wrong street. All right, soldier. You can come out from behind that mustache now. Hello. You're an awful liar, aren't you? You do wear shoes and you've got the Hey, prettiest... Maggie, do you know this guy? And you can stop the car, Mr. Johnson. We're tired playing. Oh, come on. Be a sport. I told you I was mustered out of the army today. I thought it'd be fun for the four of us to go out and celebrate. Who's the four? Harry, the hottest piano player in Panama. We're not interested. Hey, speak for yourself, Maggie. I don't know what you've got to be sore about. When you hired this car, you thought you had a native guide. So it turns out that you've got a fine, upstanding American lad and his friend. He lives here. Harry, I mean... Now, just a minute, I... Oh, you like him. And instead of showing you a lot of buildings and statues, we'll show you the real town. Look, you're getting two guides without pay, and you're kicking. Oh, come on. We drive around, I'll make my usual cracks. If you laugh, I'll think I'm good. If you don't, I'll think you're dumb. What can we waste, two hours? What's two hours? Look at those stars. They've been up there millions of years, and you're worried about what you're going to do with the next two hours. I never heard anyone talk so much in my life. Did you ever try to sell anything? Sure, right now, me. You know, if you had something good to say, you could really be marvelous. I didn't know there were so many words in the English language. Say, I haven't started. Harry, Harry, come on out here. You're about to meet Harry Rankin, the hottest piano player in Panama. Is that you, Skid? Say, no wonder he's with that overcoat on. Hello. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I'm just recovering from an attack to chills and fever. Will you have a quinine tablet? This is a tropic shadow. Yeah, I know it. Do you know it? Really, you better have one. Well, if you're for me, I've already got my pill. Harry, this is... Uh... My name's Ella. And this is a... Uh... Marguerite King. Yeah, this is Maggie King. I said Marguerite. How do you do? I'm very glad to know both of you. You should be glad to know anybody. Come on, Harry, pile in. <laughs> We're going to show them the town, the cathedrals, bonitas, the boulevards, <laughs> the cafes. Ah, see, the cafes, plenty. And these are what is known as Morgan's Ruins. Don't ask me why, but it's quiet anyway. Nice moon, too, huh? Yes, a beautiful moon. Having a good time? Yeah, so far. Oh. <laughs> Wonder where the other two mugs are. That Ella's a nice kid. What does she do? She's a hairdresser on the Southern Queen. Oh, you too? Well, not exactly. We're just friends. I was going to the coast, and she worked me in as an assistant. Then you're not coming back this way, huh? I doubt it. Oh, do you feel different down here? I feel different. I feel all... Well, it's just like a warm breeze is blowing on you all the time. There is. Oh, yeah, but I don't mean that. I, I mean inside I feel like that. Kind of sleepy. Like in front of a fireplace, you know? Yeah, I know. Trouble is, the longer you stay here, the oftener you get that fireplace feeling. Oh, of course, that's bad. You could never amount to anything hanging around fireplaces, could you? <laughs> that's pretty, isn't it? Yes. I won't be hearing that kind of music after tonight. You leaving Panama? Yeah, going to New York. Well, I hope you have better luck there than I had. What happened to you? Nothing. And when nothing happens to a dancer, that's news. Bad news. Oh, you dance, huh? You married? No. Do I look like the marrying kind? Yes. Huh? Well, I am. Well, I'm not, so don't get any ideas. Oh. <laughs> You're modest, aren't you? What are you going to coast for? Got a job? No. Pleasure trip? No. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I know it. It's a man. Oh, I get it. I'll bet you don't. I've known him for years. Whenever I had a job and he was in New York, he'd come and sit through the show. Five a day. Once he asked me to go back with him, marry him. Rich guy? Oh, I think he's what they call a cattle king. Yeah, I know the type. <laughs> you know everything, don't you? Going to marry him? I don't know. He always said I could come out and see if I'd like it out there. Sort of making up your mind, huh? I guess so. 
Well, as long as you haven't decided yet, it'd be pretty silly if I didn't kiss you, wouldn't it? It'd be pretty silly if you did, wouldn't it? We're never going to see each other again. Wouldn't make much difference one way or the other. Okay. Makes no difference at all. There. Thanks. That was just lovely. Feel better now? Sure, sure. Come on. Let's get back to town. Just Molly and me and baby nature. We're happy in my little heaven. Well, boy, I'm glad that's over. What's the matter? Don't you like singers? Oh, I love singers. I can't stand crooners. Uh-uh, I see. Oh, maybe somebody might like crooners if somebody had been dropped on their heads when they were babies, but you couldn't be very bright and like crooners, could you? Well, now, maybe you're right. Maybe so. Hey, Skid, there, Buenos Noches. Hello, Miguel. How's the band business? Ah, fine, fine. Hey, Skid, there. How about a number, huh? Just quiet, one. Quiet, quiet. Oh, but Skid, my friend. Go away, Miguel. Go on. Say, what is this? What is this, senorita? What is he, my friend, Skid? The greatest, absolutely the most magnificent crooner singer in all Panama. Will you shut up? Well, well, a crooner. <laughs> so what? I was dropped in my head. So what? Skid, please. Just one of them. Sure, go ahead. All but right. But just one. Don't go away now. I'll try not Come to. Come on, Skid. Uh, what will it be, huh? Good evening, senorita. Who are you? May I sit down, no? No, no, no. Go away. I've got enough trouble. Oh, thank you. Adios. In leaving you, it grieves me to say adios. I've been so lonely for you, lonely. I sigh and cry my adios, adios to you. And in this heart, his memory of what used to be dear for you and me set apart. Moon watching and waiting above, soon it will be blessing our love. Adios, may Valinda Moreno may like your army tristesse levels de ti. He's very good, no? He is, he really said. All the things I said to him. The music is lovely, but you are not here still, senorita. It's wonderful, he's really marvelous. I long to hold you in my arms, senorita. We will dance till dawn and you hey, shall... Hey, what are you talking about? Get away from me. Ah, Go on, get away. Get away? But why? Did you hear what I said? What's the trouble, Maggie? Well, I'm not sure, but I think this guy's being fresh. Oh, yeah? The senor will please keep his distance. I saw the lady first. He is very fresh. Well, why don't you sock him? No, I can't. You took your hat off. What's that got to do with it? It's an old South American custom. It means you'll dance with anybody in the place. Oh. And she will dance with me. Put your hat on quick. Now, listen, Kai, you got this girl all wrong. Beat it. You will please keep out of this. Now, listen, I said get scrammed. She's got her hat on. Yes? Then I take it off. Get away. Get away. Get away. And this court finds you both guilty of disturbing the peace. Two days in jail and $150 fine. What? But I can't go to jail. My boat sails tonight. Take them away. No, listen, listen, Judge, please. Well, you certainly fixed it, Mr. Skid Johnson. See Panama. See the sight. Huh. See the inside of a jail for two days. What are you blaming me for? Well, if Harry hadn't come through with the balance of the fine, we'd be in there yet. Sick nothing of it. My boat's gone, my clothes are gone, everything's gone. I'm stranded, do you know that, without even enough money to get me in a hotel. I'm sorry, Maggie, honest. Oh, forget it. I can't. What are you going to do? I don't know. If I might make a suggestion, you're perfectly welcome to live with us. Us? You're skidding me. Skid just moved in. Thanks, but I... I'm sure you're going to find it very comfortable, Miss King... Skid and I can sleep in the parlor and you can have the bedroom, huh? Thanks, Harry. It's very sweet of you. But I don't think I could stand being so close to Mr. Johnson. He gets me. I'd like to get you out of this jam. If you want, Harry and I can move out of the place and you can have it. Huh, Harry? Huh? Oh, sure. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Skid. I didn't mean to be nasty. I'll come up to the place darn glad to get it. Eighty-three, eighty-four, eighty-five, eighty-six, eighty-seven cents. That's the bankroll, folks. Eighty-seven cents. Did you get that, Harry? It's not very much, is it? No, it isn't. That little freak has certainly put you behind the eight ball, Mr. Johnson. With me, it's only temporary, just till the boat comes through again. But with you... Well, don't worry about me. I can always go back in the army. The army. What do you want me to do, go native? Always talking about the army. No ambition at all. Why don't you get a job? Huh? A job? Sure. Doing what? Anything. You can sing, can't you? He certainly can. I hate to bring this up, but Skid could go to work any time he wants at Murphy's. Murphy? Now, wait a minute. Who's Murphy? It's a girl. Everybody calls her Murphy because that's what she likes everybody to call her. She runs a cafe down the street. And she's offered Skid a job? Yep. Why don't you take it, Skid? Sure, sure. But here's something Harry doesn't know. The last time I was down at Murphy, she threw me out. Why? Oh, I don't know. Somebody started a fight or something. Yeah, I wonder who. Well, just the same, you go down and see her. Maggie, listen, you don't know Murphy. Go down and ask her. Go on. Maggie, I'm too young to die. All right, you wait here. I'll get the job for hey, you. Ain't no girl runs interference for me. I'll listen, do it. Listen, Skid, sometimes it's easier to sell somebody else than it is yourself, isn't it? For instance, it would be easier for you to tell someone I was good than to tell them that you're good, wouldn't it? Or would it? Anyway, you wait here. I'll be right back. I'll say you will. Okay, I'll walk down and pick you up as you come out. So long, soldier. That's the way it is, Murphy. Skid's a new man, honest. I made him promise that he'd behave, and he's really out to make something of himself. And he needs the job. He needs it bad. Besides that, he's good. You know that. Oh, please give him a chance, will you? Since when does Skid Johnson need somebody to blow the horn for him? What? Last I saw of him, he was a pretty quick guy with the words. Why didn't he come down and ask for the job? Well, that was my idea. Yeah? What do you do? Me? Oh, I'm a dancer, but I don't... Where'd you dance? New York last. Hmm. You're good looking, too. Thanks, but I... I'll give you 30 bucks a week in your meals. What do you say? Huh? Well, it's a job, ain't it? And you look as though you could stand one. Oh, but I didn't ask for a job for myself. I only... Let it go, then. But you couldn't work in a better place. And you're the type I like around here. You wouldn't have to do much. Dance a little. Talk to the customers. I think you're making a mistake. Well, let it go. I ain't begging you. Oh, I don't mean to be ungrateful, but it's Skid who has the talent. He... Skid's got a talent for making more trouble than any ten guys in Panama. I know, but he means well. Yeah. And he really needs a job. A young fellow just out of the army with responsibilities and everything. Skid Johnson never had a responsibility in his life. He's got me. <laughs> well, you can't be such a serious problem. Say, you're kind of new in Skid's life, ain't you? New? Uh... Well, uh, well, I should say not. Why, Skid and I have known each other since childhood. He sent for me to come down as soon as he got out of the army. I wouldn't marry him as long as he was in the army, would you? So you can see how a man would feel on his very honeymoon with his wife working and him broken without a job. Don't you see, Murphy? That's why I can't take the job unless you take Skid, too. Well, but he's and a besides, worthless... we, we do a swell number together, Skid and I. I can't do it without Skid, and Skid can't do it without me. Skid and I have always worked together. Well, not in the army, of course, but don't you see? Yeah, I can see one thing. Skid's got more sense than I ever give him credit for. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Murphy. Well, we're here, aren't we? I still don't see how you did it. It doesn't sound like Murphy. Oh, what's the difference? We got the job, haven't we? Now, look, Skid. No, you look. How'd you do it? Skid, they're waiting for you. How'd you do it? Come on. Well, she... She's really a wonderful woman, Skid. She's what? She is, really. Underneath all that bluster, she's a woman. And all women are romantic. Murphy, romantic? Uh-huh. The minute she found out we'd just been married, she went positively do we on. The minute she found out what? Oh, Skid, listen, don't, don't be mad. I, I told her we were married. You what? Do you care very much? It's not the job. Oh, don't get sore, Skid. I'm not sore, Maggie. I'm not sore at all. You know what? Well, I'll be darned. I kind of like it. Oh, oh, Skid, go on, darling. There's your song. Once I was young, yesterday perhaps, lost all my girls to some other chaps. Once I was young, but never was naive. I thought I had a trick or two up my imaginary sleeve. But now I know I was naive. I didn't know 
know what time it was Then I met you Oh, what a lovely time it was How sublime it was, too I didn't know what day it was You held my hand Warm as the month of May it was And I'll say it was grand, grand To be alive, to be young, to be mad To be yours alone Grand to see your face, feel your touch Hear your voice Say I'm all your own I didn't know what year it was Life was no prize I wanted love and there it was Shining out of your eyes I'm wise For I know what time it is now. In just a minute, Rudy Valley, Virginia Bruce, Una Merkel, and Roscoe Carnes will return in Act Two of Swing High, Swing Low. Now, while we're waiting, I'm not going in for horticulture, but I want to ask Sally here what she'd do if I sent her some flowers. Why, Mr. Ruick, how sweet of you. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, what would you do about the flowers, Sally? Oh, just an academic question. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd put the flowers in water. Yes, and then? <clears throat> well, I'd try to keep them in a cool place at night. And I'd see they always had plenty of fresh water. And later, I'd clip their stems. In other words, you'd take the best care of them, wouldn't you? And why would you do that, Sally? Well, flowers are so pretty. And it's nice to have them around. You like to keep them. Most women would agree with everything you've said about flowers, Sally. But you know, it's a funny thing. Some women don't seem to apply the same kind of thinking to their complexions. And yet, there isn't anything lovelier, anything more important to keep than a soft, smooth skin. I wonder whether the women who are listening tonight have ever thought that their happiness or perhaps the success they've worked for might be jeopardized if their skin should become unattractive, unpleasing. Oh, that really would be dreadful, Mr. Ruick. But many women do run the risk of losing their nice complexions. Without realizing it, they leave traces of dust and dirt, stale cosmetics, to choke their pores. They fail to do a thorough job of cleansing. And that's how cosmetic skin develops. Those horrid little blemishes and coarsened pores that women hate. Yes, Sally, neglect often causes cosmetic skin. And it's mighty foolish for any woman to run that risk. Goodness, yes. And it's not a bit necessary. Well, that's the point I was going to make. You can use cosmetics all you like. But use Lux Toilet Soap regularly. Its active lather helps protect the skin. Does a job you can depend on. And does it so gently, too. You'll really enjoy using Lux Toilet Soap. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Swing High, Swing Low. Starring Rudy Valley as Skid Johnson, Virginia Bruce as Maggie King, Roscoe Carnes as Harry, and Una Merkel as Ella. Supposedly married to the gay but irresponsible Skid, Maggie has gone on dancing at Murphy's Cabaret in Panama. The boat which was to pick her up on its return has passed through twice. But Maggie hasn't been thinking of leaving. She's been thinking of Skid and how she might make something of him. One night as they leave the dance floor after their number, a girl is waiting at the door of Skid's dressing room. Skid, Skid, darling. Oh, hello. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Oh, I was so excited when Murphy told me you were working here. Yeah, well, Maggie, Cynthia, this is Miss King. Cynthia used to work here... She's, she's a singer. How do you do? Oh, uh, Miss King. I thought you were the new Mrs. Johnson I've been hearing about. I am. Really? I thought I knew you awfully well, Skid. I didn't think you were the Marian kind. I, uh, still don't. Well, I've got a party waiting for me outside. Goodbye, Skid. Don't be such a stranger. <laughs> she's a, a girl I used to know. Used to know? Yeah, used to know. She didn't have much trouble reminding you who she was, did she? 
And another thing, if you don't want us to lose our job, don't introduce me as Miss King. You know, we're supposed to be man and wife. Come on, you're supposed to be working, you know. Yeah, I'm supposed to be a lot of things. Nice scorn on that last number, Maggie. Thanks, Murphy. Who was that girl who was here just now? Hmm? Cynthia Vale, why? Cute kid. Yeah, cute, like a rattlesnake's fangs. <laughs> is, I think the heat must have got you. Ella, will you listen to me? I don't have to. When I left here a couple of weeks ago, you were as sane as they make them. Well, granted, you were in jail, but you weren't balmy. Now I come back, and what do I find? You're all tied up in knots over a singing soldier. He's not a soldier anymore. He's just a singer. He's just a nut as far as I'm concerned. Oh, but, Ella, I tell you, he's changed. He's not what you think he is when you first meet him, and he's doing swell in that job, honest. Ella, I don't see what you've got against, kid. You don't even know him. You've never met anyone like him, now have you? Yeah, once. I was in an earthquake once, too. Meaning what? Meaning you're leading with your chin if you go falling for a guy like Skid. Why? What's the matter with him? Everything is the matter with him. But Ella... Oh, I know, I know. He's sweet and he's a lot of fun and he makes you think of that little boy you always wanted. But, oh, he's shaky. See, Maggie? He wouldn't stand up in an emergency. How do you know? Did you ever see him have an emergency? I don't have to. Those guys all run through the form. Oh, he's not any good for you, kid. You'd end up behind the eight ball, sure. <laughs> well, I'd have a lot of swell company. I should have known better than to try to talk sense to anybody in love. They, they quit thinking for some reason. I don't know. Look, Ella, I'm not kidding myself. This kid perfect. I know he isn't. He's just a human guy who likes a lot of fun and has it. But that kid, and that's good enough for me. Yeah. I, uh, I saw Harvey up in Los Angeles. Harvey? Yeah. He's still waiting for you to come up there and marry him. Oh, but I wrote him. I told him. I guess you didn't tell him enough. He sends his love. Thanks, Ella. I'll write him again. Hello. What are you doing back here at this hour? Oh, I went home and I couldn't sleep. And then Skid didn't come home yet. Have you seen him? Oh, he hung around for a while, then he left. Kind of late. Was anybody with him? Usual bunch of backslappers. And Cynthia. Cynthia? Again. Now listen, kid. Cynthia's like malaria. Once she gets in a guy's system, she's hard to get out. Murphy, I think I ought to tell you. Skid has a right to do as he pleases. We're not married. We just told you that. Yeah, I kind of guessed it. And you're in love with him. I guessed that, too. Yeah, I'm in love with him. Murphy, what is it with Skid? Every once in a while, I get the crazy idea he's in love with me. And every time that happens, he acts like he's sore about it. I can't figure it. You're good for him, see? And that's tough on a man. If you'll take my advice, you'll clear out. Way out. Well, good night, kid. Good night, sir. Hello, Maggie. You still up? Oh, I've been asleep. Just restless. Oh. Kind of late, isn't it? Yeah. Skid. What? Ella told me about a swell job in New York. I'm thinking of taking it. Now you're showing some sense. You should have done that weeks ago. Yeah, I should have. Well, good night. Maggie. What? Aren't you going to ride me about not coming home? Why should I? I don't blame you. You're entitled to do as you want. Good night, Skid. No, wait, look. Before you leave, I want to tell you something. You see, I've been thinking. Maggie, you're the grandest girl I've ever known. You've everything I've ever wanted. You're not afraid. You've got good sense. And you're not bad looking. And... I think I'm good looking. I think you're perfect. Oh, it's a fine time to tell me. You're the kind of a girl who knows just what she wants, and I'm... Well, I'm a guy who knows next to nothing. But if you'd like to take a chance, I'll try, Maggie, awfully hard 
Would you marry me, Maggie? Skid. Tonight, right after I turn, we could skip out and nobody would even know we've been gone. Okay? Oh, Skid, don't say that if you don't mean it. Please. Gee, Maggie, I do mean it. I do, honey, honestly. Give, baby, give. The last time is Maggie King. Give. A springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. You are the breathless hush of evening that trembles on the brink of a lovely song. You are the angel glow that lights a star. The dearest things I know are what you are. Someday my happy arms will hold you, and someday I'll know that moment divine when all the things you are are mine. Get your coat. I'll be with you in three minutes. Hello, Miss King. I, uh, came to say goodbye. I'm, uh, leaving. Oh, are you? I've got a job in New York. The El Greco Club. You know the El Greco. Sure, I know the El Greco. Does the El Greco know you? By reputation. Who doesn't? If you are scared, ever come up to New York. Look me up, won't you? No. Are you speaking for yourself or Skid? I'm speaking for both of us. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Did it ever occur to you why they call him Skid? He's a quick change artist, that's why. Now you see him, now you don't. That's why you don't bother me in the least. With Skid, all you have to do is wait your turn. You're wonderful, Miss Vale, really wonderful. Yesterday I would have worried about you, but tonight... <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Vale. Well... Hello. Harvey. Oh, Harvey, what... How are you, Marguerite? Gosh, it's good to see you, Harvey. Uh, how did you know I was here? A girl told me. Ella? Yes, she... She said you were stranded here on your way to come to me. She had no right to tell you that. Harvey, listen. No, you listen. I'm not kidding myself. I know you're not in love with me or you'd... You have married me a long time ago, but I... Harvey, don't... But, so, you don't understand. Sure I do. I always have. But I... I'm so in love with you that just having you around... Well, that's enough for me, Marjorie. Ready, Maggie? Oh, Skid. Uh, this is Harvey Howell. Harvey's a very good friend of mine. Glad to know you. Come on, Maggie. We haven't got much time. We're on our way to get married, Mr. Howell. Married? Yeah, tonight. Maggie isn't taking any chance waiting till tomorrow. Say, why don't you come along? We need two witnesses. Harry's going, and if you'll come too, well, Maggie knows you, and I think it'll be kind of nice. Skid, don't. Harvey. It's all right. I'd like to. Did you hear the minister, Skid? Do you remember what he said? For better or for worse. Till death do us part. Do you, Skid? I do, Maggie. I do. Maggie? Yes, Murphy? The fella here wants to meet you. This is Mrs. Johnson, Georgie. Georgie Wall from New York. Hi, Miss Johnson. Hello. Mind if I sit down? Of course not. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Murphy. Okay with me. Well, Mrs. Johnson, what a voice your husband's got there. I think so. Kind of a shame to be wasting it in a joint like this. Oh, don't let Murphy hear that. <laughs> don't you worry. She's rooting for him, too. She was the one who told me to drop in and listen to him. Yeah? Why? Well, uh, look, Murphy didn't tell you, but I'm an agent. And being an agent, I can spot talent. Mrs. Johnson, your husband belongs in the big time. He belongs on Broadway, and I want to put him there. 
But will he listen to me? No. Wait a minute. You mean you offered Skid a job in New York and he turned you down? That's right. And I know a spot he can step right into. Uh, honey. Oh, don't you worry. He'll take it. When would you want us to come? Huh? Oh, uh, now look, honey. Dames, they're a drug on the market. Broadway's overrun with him, see? Oh, uh, sure. Now, uh, I take Skid up on a boat with me tonight. I ain't no little shot. I'm the biggest 10% on the racket. You let him go on ahead and kind of get the feel of things, why, uh, well, then he can send for you. That makes sense, don't it? Sure. Sure, that makes sense. Too good to turn down. I've got to talk to him. Be right back. Skid, come outside, darling. Fine, let's have a drink. Huh? I'm oh, dry no, as a bone. no, no. Drinks for you tonight, Mr. Johnson. Not in your condition. What's the matter with my condition? Darling, you're about to become a star. I just fixed it. Now, you're coming over and tell that man that you thank him very much and that you'll be proud and happy to go to New York with him. New York? Oh, no. Oh, but, Skid, you can send for me in no time at all. Skid, this is your chance. You've got to take it. Look, Maggie, I've told him. I told him already. And that... I told him, too. You're, you're going, Skid. You won't regret it, boy. Now, listen, Georgie. And have I got the spot for you. The El Greco. How's that? El Greco? Yep, that's it. You've probably heard of it, huh? Yeah. Yes, I've heard of the El Greco. Gee, Maggie, I'll certainly have the laugh on you if I turn out to be a flop. You can't be, Skid. Maybe. But if I am... I know. You can always go back in the army. Right. Maggie, I, I, don't, I don't know how to say goodbye, Maggie. I've never said goodbye to you. We'll never say it, soldier. Gee, I wish I didn't feel as though we were making a terrible mistake. We're not. Here's the bankroll, Skid. I can't take that. We've saved it together. It's yours as much as mine. But I don't need it. And I don't want you to be short when you get there. Then if they don't treat you right, you can walk out. Goodbye, Skid. I love you, soldier. Goodbye, Maggie. I'm lost already without you. Goodbye. So long, honey. I'll write. So long. So long, Skid. So long, darling. Johnson skips to town, hits high C at box office. The swell is falling. Johnson, gee, he's keen. We went to our... Johnson and his magic boys have taken the big town by storm. They've named a sandwich after him at Mindy's, which is the last word in success. One of his numbers he now shares with a blue-eyed beauty named Cynthia Vale. We may be wrong, but the twosome looks like a big success in more ways than one. I've got to send a wire oh, to Maggie. come on. They're waiting. did you win at the table tonight? Oh, plenty. I'm going to charter the Queen Mary and send for Maggie. You're not over that yet, are you? Oh, what? What? Skip it. Eighth floor. Is this my floor or your floor? It's mine. I better walk up. Uh, how about coming in and uh, having a nightcap? Hmm? Mm, I don't know. I think I oh, better... Oh, come on. It'll do you good. Oh, well, Mr. Johnson, I almost forgot. I got a special delivery letter for you. Thanks. Special? Hmm. See that? 
That's for Maggie. I know her writing anywhere. Would you? Got a New York postmark. Funny if it is your wife. Maybe she... Well, what is it? She says... Here, read it, will you? I don't... Un... She must be kidding. Dear Skid, I'm leaving for Paris to get a divorce. I guess that's all right with you. I hear you're doing swell. I guess you know how I feel about that. Funny how things work out, isn't it? <laughs> Maggie. It says that? Yes. Well, Skid, darling, I guess you'll have to get over it now. Marvelous. Come on in. I came over as soon as I got your call. When did you get to New York? A couple of days ago. I came up on the boat with Harvey. I would have called you sooner, only you know how it is. Sure. Well, it looks like old times, huh? I didn't expect to see you, Harry. What are you doing up here? Oh, just kicking around one thing and another. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh... Well, what's the matter? Are you ashamed of it? Go on, tell her. Tell me what. Well, um, me and, and Ella... Uh, I, I mean, uh, Ella and me... <laughs> um, you tell her, Ella. Wait a minute. Uh, you're not married or anything. Uh-huh. Oh, Ella. Don't ask me why. Oh, well, I'm so glad. Congratulations. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, thanks. We kind of thought maybe you might come along with us and do a little celebrating, huh? Oh, thanks, but I can't. I'm sailing tomorrow early. What for? For the boys. Didn't Ella tell you? Oh, yeah, that's right. I told him twice, but I guess it didn't take... Look, Maggie, why do you have to go to France for the divorce? Ain't our divorces good enough for you? Well, Harvey's lawyer's arranged it that way, and anyway, I think the trip will do me good. Have you told Skid? I wrote him as soon as I got to New York. How's he taking it? I don't know. Well, Skid never was much for writing letters. No, but he called me. He ought to be here pretty soon. Here? What for? Well, there's no sense in being unfriendly, is there? He sounded... Well, he said he had to see me. After all, Skid always did come to me if he needed any help or anything, and... And you just keep on wiping his nose, picking him up when he falls down, and the first thing you know, you'll get Harvey sore. Gee, if I had a swell guy like Harvey, I'd do all my worrying about him. A woman ought to concentrate on one man. Doesn't mean I'm worrying about Skid, just because I said he could come up for a moment, does it? I... Right this way, boy, in here. Yes, sir. Skid! Hi, Maggie. Put those glasses down, boy. Put them down. How's that for an entrance, huh? Well... Well, looks like all the home week in Panama. Hello, Harry. A little Ella Sunshine herself. Hello. By the way, Maggie, I I got your valentine. <laughs> Want to laugh? I opened it figuring there's another gal wanting my picture. Instead of that, it was your letter. Who is that a laugh? Hi, Harry. Uh, gee, I'm glad to see you, Skid. Hi, Ella. How are you? Say, Skid, uh, Ella and I are married. Married? Well, can you beat that? Say, it's good I ordered some drinks on my way up. We'll make it a double celebration. You two getting married, and Maggie and me splitting up. Shall I serve these drinks, sir? What? And me, the best bartender in town? Here, take this buck. There you are, son. Now, don't work too hard, and maybe someday you'll be in the dough like me. Thanks, sir. I just came from a radio audition. Hey, swell joint you got here, Maggie. Looks like we're both going to end up all right. You going to Paris, getting a new husband, everybody's happy. Here you are, Gordon. Thanks, but I'm not having anything. Oh, come on, we've got to celebrate. This is Skid's going away party for Maggie. Hey, what about me? Oh, you've got to play for yours, Professor. Come on, get busy, play some. Play some fashion party, come on. <laughs> okay, it won't be the first time. Well, what's the matter, Maggie? Nothing. You, uh, you're stepping off pretty soon, huh? I have to get my final papers first, don't I? That's right. Well, I've certainly been a lot of trouble here, haven't I? Well, little Skid's going to have to struggle along without Maggie now. At the rate you're going, you won't have to struggle long. The two weeks' notice is printed on every scotch in town. Hey, sounds like old times. Maggie's riding me again. Don't worry about me, Maggie. You've got a new guy to worry about. I'm doing all right. You certainly are. Come on in, it's free. Harvey. Oh, having a party, Maggie? No. Come in, Harvey. Well, well, hello, Howell. Harry, meet Mr. Howell. Mr. Howell's old cowboy from way out west. You met Mr. Howell, Harry? Oh, certainly. We were witnesses of Skid's wedding. We're... Ow. Shut up. That's right. Oh, see. That was some wedding. Fast, but not permanent. Well, here's to the bride and groom. What's the matter? No takers? Huh. The body's getting dull. Sounded very gay in here when I came in. 
Want to go on with the music? Sure, sure. Play, Harry. How about you, beautiful Norny? New numbers? No. Go into your act, baby. Let him see it. We thought was hot stuff down in Panama. I like the way Marguerite dances. She likes the way you dance. Go on, dance. What's the matter? Getting coy on us? Want to be coaxed? Skid, stop it. Say, what is this we're celebrating? A wedding or a funeral? Everything swell, everybody's happy. Why can't we be gay about it? This is a party. This is a wedding party for Maggie. Why can't we have the wedding march fast and party? Why can't I give the bride away? Stop it, kid, please. Why, who has a better right to be giving the bride away? Shows there's no hard feelings. Why do people get sore and crab when they lose out in marriage? Why don't they join in the festivities? Come on, Harry, play the wedding march fast and party. It's a hot wedding! Stop. Now you're going, now you're going. Do you take this man? Do you take this man? I do, I do, I do. Do you take this girl? Do you take this girl? I do, I do, I do. I now pronounce you man and wife, man and wife. Come on, sing everybody. Here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Stop him. Stop Here him. comes the bride. Get all right. I'm Think going to go. How I'm going. Goodbye, Maggie. Kid. Goodbye. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars Rudy Valley, Virginia Bruce, Una Merkel, and Roscoe Carnes will return in Act Three of Swing High, Swing Low. The other night, I was at a country club dance, one of those informal weekly affairs where you see the older people dancing alongside of their sons and daughters. Well, a young college girl and her partner were sitting one out. I overheard her say to her, Well, when I get to be middle-aged, I hope I have the oomph that Mrs. Draper has. I guess every man here's asked her to dance. And that nice husband of hers is so devoted. Who? Mrs. Draper? Yeah. Look at the crowd around her. She's not exactly Helen of Troy either, but she sure has got appeal. What a swell complexion. Almost as pretty as yours, Betty. Oh, Bill. It's true. Smooth, fresh-looking skin always has appeal. I know for sure that that's something a man always notices about a woman. And it's my guess that charming Mrs. Draper is as wise as she is pretty. I'll bet that lovely complexion of hers gets thorough, regular care. You know, you'd be surprised at the number of older women who are smart enough not to neglect their looks. Smart enough to adopt the same simple beauty routine that so many famous screen stars are using. You mean the Hollywood active lather facials, Mr. Ruick? I certainly do, Sally. These facials with Lux Toilet Soap take just a few moments. And stars like Claudette Colbert and Barbara Stanwyck and Loretta Young use them regularly every day. In fact, actually nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Well, that's because they know Lux Toilet Soap's active lather removes dust and dirt and stale cosmetics thoroughly. It helps to keep your skin smooth and soft the way you want it to be. Now I'll tell you how Hollywood stars take a Lux Soap facial. First, you work up a good, rich Lux Toilet Soap lather with your hands and pat it into your skin very lightly. Then rinse with warm water, and then a dash of cold. Use a very soft towel and pat your face dry. Then when you touch your skin with your fingertips, see if it doesn't feel smooth and soft and velvety. You know, Mr. Ruick, I wouldn't think of going to bed, no matter how late it is, without taking my active lather facial. It's such a swell beauty care. You're right, Sally. And I hope the women who listen in tonight will make this simple test. Buy three cakes and try these Lux Soap facials for 30 days. You know, many women, young and not so young, have told me that they wouldn't think of missing out on the wonderful protection Lux Toilet Soap gives their skin. The protection of its active lather care. It's so thorough cleansing. And you know, skin needs that kind of care regularly, every day, to stay soft and smooth and lovely. So let Lux Toilet Soap help you have the kind of skin that's attractive, nice to look at. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on Act Three of Swing High, Swing Low. (laughs) 
several months have passed, and Skid is on the long downward path to oblivion. His job came to an end. His friends faded away. And he found that it was even too late to go back in the army. On a cold winter night, he walks slowly down Broadway, his threadbare coat buttoned against the biting wind, his hat pulled down over his face. Suddenly his name is called, and a figure blocks his way. Skid. Hey, Skid. Oh, hello, Harry. Gee, I've been looking all over town for you. How are you, Skid? I'm okay. Yeah? Well, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah? Well, yeah. You don't look at Skid. Oh, it's just temporary. I'll be back up there again. Wait and see. I got a great job coming up now, any day. Sure, I know, I know. Say, look, Skid, I'm just going home for dinner with Ella. What do you say? Well, thanks, but I just had my dinner already. Oh, come on, anyway. I want to talk to you, Skid. Come on. Kid. Thanks, Ella. Say, you act like it tastes good. It is good. You know, you can't beat this western beef. Same goes for fruit. California, that's the place. <laughs> now, careful, darling. You might have scalded me. That'll come later. Look, Skid, what's the sense in refusing us? Like we told you, Harry's put together a sweet little band. Georgie's willing to handle us, and we can audition for a swell radio spot any time we want. Only he says we need a name. I'm no name anymore. Well, that's what Georgie said, but Shut I... Shut up. He said you could build up all over again, Skid. Thanks, but I... I've got a lot of offers coming up, and, well, I... I, uh, I got a letter from Maggie this morning, Skid. Yeah? Maggie, huh? Yeah. She's, uh, she's all right? She's okay. The divorce is through. She'll be back here soon. She used to be pretty proud of you, Skid. Yeah, she... She always thought I was pretty good, didn't she? That proves she was a smart girl. That's right. I'd hate to see you let her down. What do you say, Skid? When's the audition? That's the old fight. Okay, okay, fellas. Everybody back at the studio at 8 o'clock. It's a live audition with an audience and all, so wear your tux. Okay. Harry. Ella. Gee, where you been? Did you find Skid? No, they're singing Here Comes the Bride in every bar room in town. Well, He's hit them all. That fixes it. He's been doing that little stunt ever since we took him on. Georgie's having a fit oh, and when he... Maggie. Well, for Pete's sake. How are you, Harry? What brought you here? It's all right. I know all about it. George told me. Where's Skid, Ella? That's what I'd like to know. Remember what I told you about emergencies? Well, he's having one now. He's skipped out on us, Maggie. We've got an audition here at 10 o'clock. It's his one chance to come back, and he's chucking it away. If I... Here comes the bride. Here comes the bride. Hi, Harry. Hi, Ella. Skid. Oh, Skid. Is that... Is that Maggie? Do you see her, Ella? Sure, I see her. Don't kid me. Don't kid me. I've been seeing things lately. I wouldn't kid you. Hello, Skid. How are you, Maggie? Let me have a good look at you. Say you're looking great. I'm glad to see you, Skid. Come on, let's all have a drink. Yeah, that's all you need, a drink. Ella, Ella, will you... Sure, sure. Come on, Harry, outside. Are you ashamed of me, Maggie? No, Skid. I've been an awful sap... Don't ride me, will you, Maggie? Don't ride me. I won't ride you, Skid. You know something? I can't go back in the army. I tried. They won't have me. You don't have to. You're going to be a big hit tonight. Only you've got to pull yourself together. Gee, Maggie, I don't think I can make it. Sure you can make it. You've got to, Skid. Without you, Harry and Ella will be sunk. They've been good friends of ours. You can't let them down. I'm, I'm all shot. But you can come out of it. No, I can't. I know you can. You always thought I was pretty good, didn't you? Oh, you are, Skid. You are. Oh, gee, Maggie. Oh, gee, Maggie. Skid. Skid, look at me. Oh, my darling. We're not going to be licked, are we, Skid? You'll be all right, soldier. Nothing can stop you. You'll be all right. You'll knock them dead. You haven't even started yet. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, soldier. You've got to be all right. You've got to. Thirty seconds, stand by. 
Maggie, I can't do it. Oh, yes, you can. You can, honey. Harry. Yeah? Change the first number. All the things you are. Okay. All the things you are, fellas. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Federal Broadcasting Company presents Harry Bogan and his orchestra featuring the voice of Skid Johnson. <laughs> It's no use. It's petty skin. Skid, listen. This is our number. Yeah. We're going to do it. You and I, together. Do you hear? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can make it, Skid. I can if you stick. I'm sticking. For good. For good. It's just like the fellow said that married us. For better or worse. Better for me. Worse for you. Oh, it's all right with me, darling. Put your arms around me like you used to. Lean on me, darling. Lean on me. And when you hit the last part, come in strong. Just like you used to, darling. And someday I'll know that moment divine When all the things you Swing high, swing low, having swung along its way, we meet Rudy Valley and Virginia Bruce at our microphone again. This is the microphone here, Rudy. Oh, thanks, Virginia. It looks familiar. It seems to me I've seen one somewhere before. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone you started with must be a museum piece by now. Mm, it did look more like a sardine can with trimmings of chicken wire. <laughs> tell us about the good old days of radio, Grandpa. Well, Virginia, I'll tell you. <laughs> I don't regret the good old days at all. They were old, but uh, not so good. <laughs> One night we did a broadcast from an amusement park, and our studio was right under the roller coaster. The roller coaster went by, and off in the distance, a train whistled, just as I went into the closing bars of I'm Just a Vagabond Lover. <laughs> it must have been a very odd effect, Rudy. Now, before Mr. DeMille tells us about next week's play, I'd like to say just a word about something that's important to women every week. I mean complexion care. The answer, as far as I'm concerned, is Lux Soap. I've used it for years myself because it's so gentle and so sure. Lux Soap is a real help in keeping your complexion soft and smooth. Now, Mr. DeMille, what about next week? Next Monday night, Virginia, we're going to have four stars at this microphone. Errol Flynn, Joan Bennett, Claire Trevor, and Ralph Bellamy. Our play is the Walter Wanger picture, Trade Winds. It's an exciting drama of romance and adventure around the world with a thrill in every port. And Errol Flynn, as a detective, has the very desirable assignment of tracking down Joan Bennett. Our weather prophecy for next Monday night is all-star entertainment in the Lux Radio Theater with trade winds coming in this direction and bringing Errol Flynn, Joan Bennett, Claire Trevor, and Ralph Bellamy. I'll be sure to make an appointment with my loudspeaker for next Monday as soon as I arrive home tonight. Good night. Good night. Mm-hmm. Good night. Our stage door is always open to you, too. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Errol Flynn, Joan Bennett, Claire Trevor, and Ralph Bellamy in Trade Wind. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Martha Wentworth as Murphy, Corinne Miller as Cynthia, Bill Wright as Harvey, Harold Daniels as Miguel, Lou Merrill as Georgie, Walter White as Judge, Tristram Coffin as Don, Ted Bliss as Guide, Frank Cogdon Jr. as Elevator Boy, Edward Marr as Commentator, Jordy McLean as a Girl, and Frank Martin as Waiter. Rudy Valley will star in a new weekly radio series to begin on Thursday, March 7th. 
Virginia Bruce is now making the Warner Brothers picture, Flight 8. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. <laughs> Heard on this program were all the things you are from very warm for May, and I didn't know what time it was from 2...